who jumps out of perfectly good airplanes in the name of science, Mr. C. Well, 8th grade, Monday, and it's a neat week. Um, short week, so only four days. Got a test on Thursday. I'll go over the topics in a minute. So you might want to have your journal out and um, just jot down anything you hear. Hey, I don't have that in my journal yet. Good idea to stick it in. You do have homework tonight. I'll tell you more about it in a minute. It's going to be on a sheet of your own paper. You're going to have to turn it in tomorrow. It's going to be a grade. So get it in on time. OTA, on time assignments. Good opportunity for that. So anyway, I want to show you a couple of things really quick first. I'm going to show you this. This is my oldest grandchild. This is Brayton. He is 12. And that his mama is right beside him, a.k.a. my middle daughter, Lisa. And Brayton loves sports. Especially he loves footy, as they call it, in Australia. He's got his rugby jersey on. He loves rugby. I would not want him to tackle me. So... I just said to him, um, the last time I was there, um, nearly two years ago, when he was in fourth grade, he was still very strong, but I could take his hands and he could resist me, but I could still, I was still strong enough to overcome his muscles and go patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, and so on, just to tease him. I bet I couldn't do that anymore. He's almost 5'8". So, anyway, he's going to be probably 6'3 or 6'4, and I'll bet he's 220, 225. So, anyway, he is going to be a big dude. He's a neat kid. He loves uh, Jesus. He loves other people, really cares about them. But, boy, he uh, tackles hard in rugby. And that's why I have my rugby hat on, Penrith Panthers hat. And they just won a big rugby match over the we over this weekend actually, which would have been two days ago because they're one day ahead of us. So anyway, no charge for that. I want to show you this. Really important, and this will be on the test. Here it is. Is that Colossians 1.16? Yes, that would be Colossians 1.16. Mr. C, one of those funny scratchings. That's the Greek New Testament that the New Testament was originally written in. And here's what it says. Because in him, Jesus, all things were created. It's panta in Greek, which means everything. In him, all things were created. Sounds like John 1.3. Uh-huh. All things in the heavens and upon the earth, visible and invisible. Hey, it sounds like uh, invisible atomic particles. Uh-huh. Visible and invisible, it says in the Greek. Not seen is the word. It's a, which is not. And then in front of visible or seen. So, did he make the Higgs field? Yep. We think the Higgs field exists. If it exists, we're pretty sure it does now because the Higgs boson particle was found, which verifies the Higgs field. And remember, the Higgs field, we think, goes, it's around us, it's throughout the universe, and it's what gives particles their mass. It's mysterious. It sounds like Jesus. So anyway, if the Higgs field exists, he made it. So it didn't happen through natural processes because all of that is way too specific. And then it says, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things, there's Panta again, all things through him and unto him have been created. And then what are we going to have to write, Mr. C, all of that? No. Here's Colossians 1, 17. Let me expand it so you can see it a little better. Here it is. 
and it says he is before all things. And there's panta again, and all, panta, all in Greek, and all things in him hold together. There it is. You see that? It's soon as they can hold together. Soon is with in Greek and and then the verb estekin or sinestekin means to hold together. So or together. So here's what I'm going to ask you on Thursday's test. I'm going to give you this part of Colossians 1.17. I'm going to give you this part. And he is before all things, and in him all things. I'm going to have you finish it. I want the verb. What is the verb? And in Jesus, or because of Jesus, or through Jesus' power, all things hold together. That verb in the Greek is a perfect. The verb is a perfect tense. So what does that mean, Mr. Chambers? A perfect tense means that all things right now hold together with the result they will continue always to hold together into the future. Hold together now will always hold together in the future. And in him, Jesus, all things hold together. Remember, atoms would fly apart without their specific, exact, Fine, finely tuned mathematical uh, properties so that Jesus had to specify. So anywho, cool stuff. I love that. Colossians 1.17. And what, what verb are you going to write? And in him, Jesus, in Colossians 1.17, all things, everything. There isn't, there isn't anything that doesn't. What's the verb? Hold together. So don't let anyone tell you, oh, it accidentally happened or the Big Bang formed it or, you know, it's natural. No, no, no. That's just an excuse for people who don't want to give God the credit and they don't want to believe in God. They got the data. They know the divine designs. They know their idea doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense. But I'm going to hang on to it anyway because I do not want to believe in a God. Do not. So, Anyway, specific, don't forget, 10 SSRs in the next uh, six to eight weeks. Make them good ones. You know, not, I, I really enjoy my peanut butter and jelly. So, no, that, that could be an SSR. I shouldn't put that down. I mean, you could. Okay, but, you know, could you do a little thinking about your SSRs? this time and really, you know, give God a big shout out. Thank you for each one. You know, now you don't have to shout all over the neighborhood. I'm not talking about that. But in your spirit, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, in your spirit. So I had a cheeseburger last night if we want to talk food. I had a cheeseburger last night that was to die for from Cheesecake Factory. Oh, it was good. I just had half. I split it with my wife. So cheeseburger, so good. So I ate it slowly. And are you thankful? You bet. Why does God give us all these SSRs every day? Many of them for us to enjoy because he loves us. He's a good God. Okay. Hey, I wanted to rapidly go over um, the first test of the fourth quarter. So I'm going to rapidly go over it. I'm just going to rip through it. And almost everything on here um, probably is going to be on this Thursday's test, plus some other things. And I have, it, I have it all down here, all the topics. And by the way, these are going to be up tonight, Monday night, on uh, RenWeb under homework notes. All right, here we go. Two of the best divine designs of the snow leopard. I'm not going to ask you about the snow leopard. But I'm probably going to ask you about the baby gray whales, baleen, um, that filtering material that hangs down, that they filter their food with, 
So I'm going to show you a little video clip at the end of today's lesson on a baby gray whale that came up to this whale watch boat uh, just for some attention. And they actually rubbed its baleen. It is so cool. And you look at that baleen and go, there is no way, no way whale fans that that baleen formed by itself. No way. It was DNA'd by God. You know it takes DNA to make everything. So, anyway, just, you know, glory to God for just everything he makes. All right, uh, the atomic number of an element is all about the number of protons. I guarantee that will be on the test on Thursday. The current best hypothesis for a model of an atom, a cloud, I'll ask that again. The glues that hold together atoms of opposite electrical charges in the nucleus. You know in the nucleus you've got proton, proton. They should do what? So light charges repel, but they don't. Why not? Because the strong force is stronger than the repelling force, the electromagnetic repelling force. Strong force holds the protons together. So that'll be on there. Why do they hold together? Strong force. Okay. One of the scientific arguments for a creator is that each of the 92 naturally found elements on the PTE are specifically and very complexly designed. So, list two additional subatomic particles. I'll have you do that again. Give the correct symbol for hydrogen. That'll be on there too. H for hydrogen. HE for helium. Yep, it'll be there. FE for iron. Yep, it'll be there. C for carbon. The element that your tissues are made of. Yep, it'll be there. So, also, I'm going to ask you about the two gases, their symbols that are found in Earth's atmosphere. So, of course, N for nitrogen, about 78%, and O2 for oxygen. So that'll be there as well. So if the, I'm not going to ask you about the gases. The temperature of a gas is increased, then the pressure and its volume go up. It has more pressure and takes up more space. Um, and what photo did I show you to get that idea across? Um, I showed you a hot air balloon, recall? Heat up the air in a hot air balloon, it expands, more pressure, more volume, takes up more space. And then if the pressure of a gas like oxygen is increased, its volume decreases because it's squeezed into a smaller space, like in a scuba tank. So let's see what else I had. I'm going to ask you the pillars again, pillars of evolution, fossils, what's the evidence, no tweeners, no ape men. O pillar, old age. So if you can show that the earth is young, then there's not enough time for evolution to happen. What are some of the O pillar things? The comets keep coming back. They should have all melted a long time ago. They're made of ice. That would be um, one biggie right there. Earth has too much heat inside. So does the moon. The rocks on earth have too much water and gas in them. It should have all leaked out a long time ago. So there, though, those are some good O pillar data right there. So, and there's a whole lot more. The A pillar, the accident pillar, ah, ah, and it can't be an accident, it can't be random, because the law of cause and effect, things don't happen by accident, they have causes, so there's a great causer, law of cause and effect, and the law of biogenesis. Life doesn't happen by itself, life comes from life, the law of life or biogenesis. Most powerful evidence that the fossils reveal no tweeners, no ape men, and also that there was a great global flood that buried all of the um, living things, plants, animals, and humans. Oh, uh, another O pillar, you know, one of my favorite O pillar data, and a recent one. So the it involves the layers of sedimentary rock, like in the Grand Canyon, the layers of sandstone. If you look in between each layer, they're smooth. That means they were laid down rapidly. If you would have had a layer of sedimentary rock exposed to the environment over thousands of years, it would have eroded and have rough edges and areas that weren't smooth. No, nope, they're smooth, 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 laid down quickly, smooth, 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 laid down quickly by the great global flood. So it's one of my favorites. 
for a young age. One word idea that the universe and all life supposedly, slowly, gradually, over billions of years, change from one thing to another, one kind to another evolution, of course. So anyway, doesn't make sense. By the way, the guy that kind of um, persuaded Darwin to come up with his idea, Charles Lyell, he was a geologist. He faked all his geology stuff. He knew it wasn't true. He knew the earth wasn't old, but he got tired of Christians saying it was young and the great global flood hypothesis. So he got sick of that. So he invented the really slow developing age of the earth. But he didn't have data for it. He just made it up. Fake news, Charles Lyell. Okay, kind of one of the fathers of geology, modern geology. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He just came up with it, not based on data. Wow. And they still don't have data. That's why I just gave you a bunch of young age data. They'll tell you they do. I took geology at ASU. I took two geology courses. Old age. You know, I got tired of hearing it because it doesn't make sense. The dating methods, the radiometric dating methods, they get dating methods from hundreds of years to thousands of years. You can get rocks that would just came out of a volcano within the last hundred years and it'll measure millions of years old with some of their dating methods. Huh? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. That's why those methods, those really, really old methods that geologists use, they're not accurate. They use them anyway. They throw out the young ages and keep the old ones. Hey, little secret. So, anyway, you and I want to give God credit for making everything, designing everything, and the evidence is everywhere, and that it ain't that old. Evidence. So, I, I could give you a list. I could pull up a list of, from PhD scientists of evidence that the earth is young, about a hundred different scientific evidences, and just drop them on you. Now, if those that I give you, those are a few. They're not mine. I'm not that smart. I don't have a PhD in all these scientific areas, but these guys do. They're brilliant, and they drop the data down and go, it ain't old. And it was designed. So, anyway, it's backed with tremendous intellectual, but scientific as well, evidence. And it matches the biblical evidence. You can't have one without the other Bible and science Bible and science go together sorry about that I hope I don't cause you to lose your stomach contents but <laughs> I love that song Bible and science are inextricably linked don't let anyone tell you otherwise it's fake news it's not the truth ah, BFL the Bible and science match so well. So, all right, Mr. C, you're on fire today. I am on fire. <laughs> Can you feel it? Okay, keep going, keep going. Uh, what do you got? Uh, we did the O-pillar data, science evidence, thousands of years we did that. It means evolution wouldn't work because they don't have um, billions or millions of years. Two scientific laws, we did that already, cause and effect, biogenesis. Uh, mutations supposed to be a great mechanism for making change. Ah, no, they're not. Why not? Because they're rare, they're harmful, and often fatal. And you can't wait around trillions of years for supposedly beneficial mutations. So this doesn't work. What's the other kind of like peanut butter and jelly sandwich part of the evolution idea? The peanut butter is mutations and then the jelly that's supposed to go with it so well? Natural selection doesn't. Natural selection doesn't make living things change. All it does is gets rid of the ones that do change. So, bad ideas. But, when you don't want to believe in God, you come up with, you, you, that's all you got. You don't have anything else to offer. It's sad. So, hey, if you know people who aren't, you know, aren't believers and go, well, you know, it's all random and all that. Pray for them. They need their heart opened up. It's not about the head thing. We've got the head data. We've got the, intel the intelligent scientific data. We got it. We got it. I just said we got both. But what people need, they need to be prayed for, that God will open their heart. Sue. So, 
to really see what's going on. So anyway, later in the week, I'm going to dump on you so much historical evidence that the resurrection of Jesus occurred. I'm so excited about it. Can't wait to get to it. So, and that'll probably be tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, two science evidences, the Big Bang. Idea doesn't work well. Um, um, explosions don't cause um, order. They cause disorder. Where'd the particles come from in the first place? They don't want to talk about that. They won't even go there. Why would the particles attract? They were, they were spread out so far they wouldn't even come together. They didn't have enough mass or gravity to attract each other. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about where the particles come from, why wouldn't they attract. We don't want to talk about that, they would say. We're just going to talk about what we think happened from there. Oh, really? Okay. Well, how about explosions don't cause order? Or how about explosions don't cause everything to rotate? So, for science, little science evidence. And there's a whole lot more that I can cite from PhD scientists. So, why the Big Bang doesn't make sense. And when you hear, oh, we've got this uniform temperature everywhere. So, so, could have been that way because of the way God created it. Doesn't necessarily mean the big, it's an aftermath of the Big Bang. You know, so they use that all the time too. Very best evidence of all that reveals that God, Jesus, like it says in Colossians 1, made everything best evidence of all. Probably the human body, DNA in the human body, a cell, and now you've got all this particle stuff. So, just over the top, all this particle stuff. Okay, about the Higgs field, the Higgs boson. It's so amazing, so mysterious. It is so finely tuned, all the particles and everything in the universe. The gravities, you know, the gravities, the masses, the speeds, the weight, you know, all of that. Just, it's all finely tuned. It, you can't tweak one of them and get it out of, out of tweakness. <laughs> you, if it gets out of tweak, it um, destroys all the other ones and they don't work. So can you see the precision? Precision. Eh, that's why Jesus did it with precision. So it would be obvious he made it. And that's what it says in Romans 1. Through, how do you know God exists? Through what has been made in the Greek in Romans 1. Okay, so test topics, the PTE, periodic table of the elements, about 100 plus elements. So all of that, um, the elements that we cover in their symbols, H for hydrogen, H, E, helium, N, nitrogen, O2, oxygen, F, E, iron, C for carbon. We'll probably end up doing C, U for copper. We'll probably do A, L for aluminum. SI for silicon, uh, and we'll add an additional one, probably another another metal, probably. Now we'll probably do HG for mercury, one of the two liquids, liquid elements. So anyway, more coming later in the week. Smallest part of an element, an atom, what do you call, where you have an element and an element combining, you've got a compound, element, element, compound, I'll ask you that. What's the smallest part of a compound? A molecule. Do you have it in your journal? Molecule. M-O-L-E-C-U-L-E. -E -E, molecule. So, so you've got, um, ele I'll try it again, smallest part of a compound, a molecule. M-O-L-E-C-U-L-E. -E -E. Um, the best model for an atom that we think right now, we don't know for sure. Mysterious again about how Jesus exactly put together atoms. Cloud, what do you call the center? of an atom, a nucleus. What are the particles in the nucleus? Positive protons that shouldn't hold together, but the strong force does hold them together. And you've got positive and negative combined or neutral neutrons. Remember the neutrons just have one U, so they're made of one up quark and two down quarks. And then the protons have two up quarks and one down quark. So quarks are the fundamental particles that um, these hadrons are made of, uh, protons and neutrons. So anyway, um, protons are made of quarks. So you've got um, the fundamental particles. You've got quarks, electrons, and then um, that's what matter is made of. They're called fer fermions, fermions, okay? And then um, electrons are in the category called 
leptons. So anyway, what else? Um, so we've got the electrons orbiting, Fulman pillars, I've already gone over those. LHC is the Large Hadron Collider, so I'm not going to show you a picture of it right now. You already know about it, the Large Hadron Collider. Um, 27 kilometers underground under the Swiss border, um, or under, yeah, right, the border of um, Switzerland, France. What's its purpose? To smash protons together and see what they're made of to discover fundamental particles. Um, the standard model of fundamental particles, I already went over the fundamental particles, so quarks and leptons like electrons. The four fundamental forces, um, you've got um, the electromagnetic force that holds uh, magnets together um, and holds also, and also causes fusion to occur on stars. You have gravity um, also. Uh, the um, strong force and the weak, for weak nuclear force, those two. The Higgs field, which permeates the universe, we think, right now. We, this is, the Higgs field is here. We can't feel it, but it's there. And it gives um, atoms their mass. Really mysterious. <laughs> it just really glorifies God in a special way. And then all the fine-tuning of the universe. Okay, you've got homework tonight, 8th grade, here it is, homework, and then I'm going to give you a little two-minute video on the, um, it's a baby gray whale, it's probably 15 feet long, um, wasn't uh, born very long ago when this video was captured or taken, and you're going to see the baleen that's still growing, and that's why the mamas know when to leave and head back to Alaskan waters, the babies have to put on enough fat, so they're insulated from the cold water, and they have to develop enough bristles, enough baleen, so they can filter food when they start eating on their own up in the shallow, muddy waters of Alaska. So anyway, here's your homework. Um, read pages 83, 86, and 87. 83, 86, and 87. This is up on RenWeb. 83, 86, and 87. And then I want you, on your own paper, to list all the major things in bullet fact form about the periodic table from 83, 86, and 87. Bullet facts about the periodic table. Okay, keep going until you run out of the important ones. How many? I'm not going to give it, put a number on it. I'm not going to put a number on it. You put the number on it and figure out how many is enough. Okay, the major ones, you analyze and decide. The major points or facts about the periodic table of elements, 83, 86, and 87. It'll be on RenWeb. Okay, that assignment. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Phillip. He's going to show you the video about the baby gray whale, and um, you're going to love it. Just coming over for some attention and some rubs, and boy, you get a good look at the baleen, and boy, wouldn't have I like to have been doing this. I actually did this once in this same area and had gray whales come up to our raft, right up to it, but not this opportunity that you're about to see. It's pretty fantastic. Mr. Phillip, thank you, sir.